most importantly, uh, we have a few things going on during our potluck. We're going to have a congregational informational meeting. We're not going to do any business. We just want to check in. We want to share about the state of our church, our mission, our vision, and where we are and, and where we're headed. So we're going to do a check-in on that. And then probably most importantly, we're having a volunteer fair. And a bunch of our leaders have set up little tables and flyers and information, just different ways you can be involved in the church, different ways you can answer God's call to serve and to share life and love. And we have so many different opportunities, all abilities, all schedules, however you can be present with us and serve Christ with us. We've got an opportunity for you. So today is the day to find out a little bit more, get a little curious. So we hope you have all your questions answered and find some way to be a part of our church. And I'll turn you to our little announcement section. You can even see a snapshot of some of our main mission opportunities and ministry opportunities on the second page of the announcement page. I do want to make one final little plug uh, for name tags, uh, thank you to everybody who's wearing a name tag today. We do encourage wearing a name tag. I forgot mine, so I am the Excuse me. Uh, but we'll all work on wearing a name tag just so we can get to know each other better, and especially with all the new faces and a lot of folks just getting to know each other a little bit better. So and if you'd like a permanent name tag, you can see the announcement on the announcement page, and we'll get that to you. My final announcement is a big thank you. Uh, thank you to everyone. Last week I had to be out for a family wedding. It was a wonderful time. Got to spend a lot of time with a lot of extended family. Uh, but I want to especially thank Reverend Karen Gatlin, who's getting her name tag right now. <laughs> Thanks, Karen. Yay. Thank you to everybody who made that worship service possible last week and, and meaningful. So thank you. And Good to be back with you. Well, those are the announcements we have this morning. Uh, it is a joy to be here with you. And we like to begin worship with celebrations, naming the joys we bring into this space. And especially today is a day of celebration because not only are we doing all the things we've already announced, today we're also taking time to thank all the leaders and all the volunteers who make our church go and give us a chance to do good ministry and to serve and love as Christ serves and love. So in that spirit of celebration, I'd like to open it now to a time of birthdays and anniversaries. Are there birthdays and anniversaries to be celebrated this morning? Nancy's telling He's like the second year of the birthday talk. <laughs> <laughs> Little Matthew Robert Herman. Our little grandson was born on Thursday. Yeah. Everybody's doing good. Everybody's busy here and healthy. Yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful. So literal birthday. Uh, so this past Thursday, Nancy and Warren welcomed in their first grandchild. And he's doing, Matthew is doing well, mom is doing well, so we are grateful. It is a joy to see you this morning, Nancy, and a joy to celebrate that with you. Yes, Karen. I have a grandson who is 10 today. Rowan is 10 today. What's his name? Rowan. 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 Nice. Rowan turns 10. Happy birthday, Rowan. Absolutely. Yes, Luann. Uh, today is my birthday. It's a good hey! birthday. Celebration. I see someone here who hasn't been here forever. 
Hi, Terry. Yeah. <laughs> Terry's been doing mission work for us in Northern California for a year. <laughs> well, in this spirit of joy and celebration. Oh, Nancy, go ahead. I wanted to comment. Jen is well enough to be here today, or really yeah. well enough. And Jan, I've been here for a long time. Who is I guess about healed from her. She donated a kidney that was here. Yes, it is great to see Jim and Jan here. Thank you for being here on this celebratory day. It is a blessing to see both of you. Thank you, Nancy, for bringing that up. Well, in this spirit of joy and celebration, let's let's take a moment, let's take a deep. And centered on the presence of the Holy Spirit. I invite you to stand as you are able and body your spirit and greet each other with a sign of Christ's peace. And don't forget to wave at the camera and tell them. We invite the Holy Spirit to this space to celebrate my goodness and presence in our gathering time together. Prepare our hearts to receive what you have for us today. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing as you're able to allow your spirit for our opening.
our prayer for transformation and new life printed in your glory. We ask your forgiveness, O oh Lord, for not being truthful in acknowledging that we have failed you and those who have trusted in our care. We know that we have a long way to go, O oh Lord. We ask that you open our hearts to be receptive to your Holy Spirit. We ask you to transform our hearts within it so that we will be renewed in our commitment to be in the beloved community you are calling us to be. Hear these words of God's mercy and everlasting assurance of grace. God, given your love for us, sending Christ to join us in human suffering, even death, and raising Christ to eternal life. Beloved, in Jesus Christ, our sins are our freedom. We now enter into our time of prayer this morning, lifting up prayers of our community and of our world. We do carry forth the many celebrations that were lifted this morning, earlier in our day. So we carry those joys with us this morning. I do have a couple of other prayers to lift up for our community, especially today. Today, I pray for all of our volunteers. I want to give a prayer of thanksgiving for all of our leaders who have brought us to this point. If you know anything about church, you know that it's really the volunteers who make it go, who make its mission live and thrive. So thank you to all the people we're about to celebrate right after this prayer time. Thank you for all their energy and their gifts and their love and commitment to Christ and that those gifts get poured out into us and we're beneficiaries of that. <clears throat> 
I do have in that spirit a prayer of concern to lift up, and we'll talk a little bit more about this during our informational meeting. Uh, this past week, we were given some very sad news. Uh, Craig, our moderator, and his wife Peggy, unfortunately due to some personal issues, have informed myself and the other leaders that they will need to take some time away from the church at this point. Uh, they ask simply that we pray for them, hold them in prayer at this time, and we will. Uh, they gave a lot of life and love to the church, and so we hold them in prayer. As I do pray that concern, I also want to lift up a joy. Uh, Kathy, our vice moderator, who we will hear from this morning, uh, she has taken full, she's taken on the role, and also I want to give a thanks to our other council members, and I just want them to raise their hands. We got Mary Ann, and Vera, and Mike. Um, these three people, and Kathy, are great leaders. I couldn't ask for a better group of people to lead us in a time like this, and so we are blessed, and God is with us, even when we face challenges. So thank you to you, and may God's blessings continue to be upon us and lead us through this time. I want to lift up prayers for our world, as everybody has known for about a week now, uh, a war has broken out in Israel uh, following unthinkable terrorist attacks from the terrorist organization on aspect of Hamas, so prayers of justice at this time, prayers of peace at this time. We pray for all those living in this area who are caught in the crossfire of a political war and pray for all of them. Somebody this past week asked me if there are any Christians in Palestine, and the absolute resounding answer is yes, there are lots and lots and lots. And really the reality is most of the people in this region are just human beings. Whatever faith they worship, whatever creed they proclaim, most of them are just everyday human beings trying to do what God is calling to them to do, and now they're caught in a terrible, unthinkable war. So let us pray for peace, let us pray for justice, and let us pray that the peace that surpasses all understanding break through into this world and into this time, and that compassion and wisdom be upon all of our leaders throughout this world to deal with this conflict. <clears throat> Those are a lot of prayers, so I will leave it at that for now. Are there other prayers you would like to offer up in this time and space? Yes. My dear friends, Lillian, their name, their daughter, their granddaughter, Ileana, who is just, she's seven, died of a sleeper. Awesome. And what was the grand, what was their daughter's name? Ileana. Ileana, okay. Thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, we're lifting up Ileana who had, is seven years old and has been diagnosed with bone cancer. We pray for her parents and for you and the whole family at this time and pray that compassion and wisdom lead the way. Nathan. Yeah. Yeah, I pray today for a new that I just heard recently that the, a person who attended me in the baptism of my brother Martha I was there with my uh, was beaten uh, just a few years ago, but I don't know. So the person who really knows this name of Jose, but they never say. And this is another thing that I'm gonna pray. So I pray for um as this is say right for all the news. I'm gonna pray for them today and just to let you know. Today was she was in staffing and uh, she was very close to us. She was known by Jose, but they didn't say. Other people are likewise in the church. So I was a member of the church when it came to a pastor Jennifer, director, and a person. She saw me that I was thrown in the engine there to a fire. Since uh, 2016. Whatever. I guess I'm praying for those who need it, whatever they are, where they are. And uh, I thank God that I personally am given that as a ability. Yeah. Because it's also like uh, in the Bible, the teaching of job. 
God said, Job taught us to always keep the focus on God and realize that it is God. So many times the, the people that I talk about are not going to make a movie. The God or the lack or the coming around me in God or I just don't want to give my God for the gifts that He gave me so I can keep one. And the rest is mine. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Benito. Benito lifts up a few different prayers. Most importantly, for a friend who was beaten very viciously, prayers for healing, prayers for peace, and Benito powerfully quotes scripture to pray for those who did this, and that um, you know peace and justice be upon this world and be upon especially those folks who need it. Uh, continue to be with you. Yes, Marianne. I would like to pray for my sister who is in order to travel to West Africa next month. And I just want prayer for her travel and support. Yeah, definitely. Prayers for Terry as she travels back to Nigeria um, for uh, personal reasons and prayers for your safety there, safety <coughs> being there, and safety return home. Yeah, thank you. Yes, Jay. Uh, this past weekend while we were out of town, my maternal grandmother passed away. Um, and so now my mom lost both of her parents. Um, so I just wanted to pray for her and um, her five brothers. Thank you, Jay. And prayers for you as well. Um, prayers for our whole family. So Jay lifts up uh, this past week while we were out of town, we found out that Jay's maternal grandmother uh, passed away and her name is Cal. And so we pray that Cal is at eternal rest and God's love and peace <clears throat> and prayers for my mother in law and Jade's mom, Kim, as she grieves the loss of her second parent. Uh, and that peace and love surround the whole Ford family. John. Uh, Father, we thank you for Jade and Kim. Just a prayer for my son um, who is in the hospital in California. We're Going to be leaving pretty soon to go visit him. He's had uh, lifelong struggles, um, and uh, his his liver is in pretty bad shape now. So we're leaving uh, either sometime this afternoon or first thing in the morning to go back there and uh, to be with him and his and his wife. So just uh, prayers for the two of them and for Glenn's recovery. Thank you, John. John lifts up prayers for his son who's in the hospital and has been dealing with uh, lifetime struggles and his liver is now in a tough place. And John and Karen will be leaving this afternoon, if not tomorrow morning, uh, to travel to California to be with him. John and Karen, we're praying for both of you. We're praying for your son and we pray that love and God's Holy Spirit surrounds you and holds you in this time. Yeah, Grace. I'm praying for uh, Muggs or Margaret Olson. Uh, she entered the hospital. I did not know it. And uh, she's had a hematoma. I forgot how that happened. On her elbow. Anyway, it came, you know, full of whatever. And I was very, very painful. So I think she took herself, or if she, came, she didn't have a car, she usually calls me. Anyway, she's in the hospital and they drained it and it was full of all the stuff. And anyway, they got it out and she thinks she might get home today. She said, Oh, I'm out of the hospital. So I'm quite relieved that I'm not out of the somewhere on the floor. Yeah. Thanks, Chris. Right. I'm so yeah. pleased that she's alive. Yeah, yeah. So we're praying for Muggs. Uh, Muggs, we found out this morning, was in the hospital. We're deeply relieved and we're praying for Thanksgiving that uh, it was, she had a little abrasion. She had a hematoma on her elbow. She'll be okay. They're taking care of it. We're hopeful and we're praying she gets to go home today. And so in prayer for you, Grace, as you help her along with that. So thank you for bringing that up. Yes, Perry. I'd like to pray for my husband. He's having surgery on his left hand Thursday. And I just pray that all the doctors and nurses and anybody that touches it will be guided by God's hands. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Perry. So we're praying for Rich, who's having surgery on his left hand. And we pray that all goes well and that God's wisdom and compassion will be upon everyone. 
the care stream. Absolutely. There are no other prayers to be lifted this time. Let's go to God in a moment of silence as we lift these prayers as well as the prayers we hold in the sacredness of our hearts. Dear God, the one who is love, we come to you today because this is the day you have made and you called us to rejoice in. We come celebrating bright, beautiful sunrise. We come celebrating cooler temperatures. We also come, God, knowing both the wonderful joys of new life and the ecstatic, unthinkable birth of your hope. We also recognize that that birth, that hope, that joy comes in the midst of great chaos, of war, violence, unthinkable illness, struggle, pain, and suffering. We recognize, God, that for many of us, just to get here this morning is a miracle, and we are grateful for it. God, we pray that whatever suffering we face, whatever sufferings we have named this morning, whatever sufferings are experienced by our neighbors, near and far, known and unknown, that your love will break in, as it has in the past, to lead us, to give us what we need, give us the healing so that we may answer your call to serve. Especially on this day, God, we are so grateful for all of those, all those servants of your, your children who you have blessed us, our community with, to lead us in your way to serving you and to loving you more fully. God, in a time of great chaos and a time of loss and suffering, remind us that there's no tomb you can't break open, that there's no place that you can't bring forth new and abundant, thriving life. And with joy, we now join together with Christ, singing the words he taught us. church. So this is a time of great celebration and excitement, and I'm grateful to read off all these names and hand out gifts and make them special. We are going to do it in ceremonial style, the fact that you're going to have to hold your applause until 80% of the congregation is up here. <laughs> Trust me, 80% of the congregation. I have a lot of cards up here. It's a real joy. A lot of the students who are here, unfortunately. But first and foremost, we will start with our church council. Also, what you should know and what you will know and what you will learn is that a lot of these people don't just have one role. It's, you know, if we were hat dealers, we'd be millionaires because we deal out a lot of hats and a lot of people take on various hats. Um, but first, we're going to start with our council. And as I said, 
uh, in our prayer time, you know, unfortunately, Craig, our moderator, has had to step away due to personal issues, and that leaves us greatly sad. And I just want to take a moment and just say thank you to Craig, because Craig brought a lot of life to this church, and a lot of love and leadership to this church, and he will be sore than that, so uh, Craig will be the first name I call. The next name I call, Kathy Wessels is our vice moderator. Uh, she does all of her work remotely. <laughs> she worships with us online all the time. She will be with us at the congregational meeting via Zoom. We are a 21st century church. This is what church looks like now. Uh, you will meet Kathy if you stay for the meeting. Uh, she's awesome. So that's my second name I'll say. But next, we actually have some concrete people here. Uh, Mike Sanders, come forward with no applause until the end. It's the council members who can't follow it. Uh, and then next we'll call Vera Shuri forward. Maria, will you come forward, please? You're next. The real question is, where's your car? We'll find your car. I know, right? Oh, wait, here it is. All right, I'm going to call the rest of these people. I'm going to try to capture all the things they do for our church, but that's going to be nearly impossible. So, um, but first, on top of my stack here is Georgine Hurst, and if you've read any public information about our church in any magazine, it's Georgine Hurst. Come on forward, Georgine. Um, somebody else who wasn't able to be with us this morning uh, is Todd Evans. Todd has stepped in for us doing our IT work. I will introduce Todd to you another time, but please do thank Todd. Todd has done amazing work for us. Also, somebody who wasn't able to be with us today is Sally Bartley. Sally Bartley, uh, she essentially ran the church. <laughs> uh, Sally, Sally was that usher. Sally is in charge of the pastoral relations committee. Sally does about some other things I don't even know. Uh, so if you get a chance, Sally has reached a point she's just got to be home right now. Uh, she is still active in this church. When I call her up to check in on her, she tells me about seven things we need to get to. So please thank Sally if you get a chance. Uh, next up, thanks to our new beautiful garden. All thanks to Grace Berg. Come on up, Grace, for all that you do and for all that you do for our buildings and grounds. Thank you, thank you. Uh, next, I'm going to invite forward Ann Walker, an usher, a greeter, and what else? A few other things. <laughs> and Ann's going to speak to you this morning. Thank you very much. Uh, somebody else who's not going to stand up. Join the group. Join the crowd. Next, uh, who also isn't able to be with us this morning, is on our pastoral relations team and has done other uh, volunteer work for us, is Kyle Cope. Uh, next, I'm going to invite forward Larry Leifer, our volunteer treasurer. Uh, Larry also is going to be ending in service with us at the end of the year. But Larry has done amazing work for our church. Thank you so much, Larry. Thank you for everything you've done. You've got to hang out up here. Rachel Koch is our financial secretary. Her and Kyle, they will be here. They, they show up. Uh, they just can't be here today. But we will thank them when we see them. Next, Karen Gatlin. Uh, Karen is on our uh, most recently she helped with our sabbatical plan, uh, which you'll hear more about during our congregational informational meeting. Karen also writes our vision report, which we'll get out for you very soon. Thank you, Karen. Uh, James Cochran, uh, uh, Corcoran, sorry. Uh, sorry, James, excuse me. Uh, James is the head of our mission and outreach department. James is doing phenomenal work. Our ICS missions, our monthly missions, our trips to Mexico. James is rocking that. Thank you, James. Uh, Muggs, who you heard is in the hospital, helps with our garden and our facilities. Uh, Meg Conrad is another one who has helped us from afar. She's a snowbird. Uh, she also uh, she recently sold her house in Arizona, so she will be leaving us. But she has the help with our personnel committee. She also helped with our sabbatical plan. She has been awesome. Uh, Warren, hi, Warren, come forward. Warren, 
Warren is with us. Warren is the new head usher. Hi, Warren! Thanks, Warren, for everything you're doing. Warren is phenomenal uh, in so many ways, and I can talk about all the people. Uh, next is Lana Wilson, our canter. She's on the worship committee. She's in charge of the lay readers. Lana Wilson, I mean, there's seven of them. Yeah, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, next, uh, a member of our personnel committee and somebody who steps in with music and helps in other ways, Priscilla Small, come forward. I will also invite John Gatlin forward. John does our uh, took all our pictures for our directory. He's our, our church photographer. He also is on our pastoral relations committee. Um, some of you is unfortunately not here with us this morning. Louise Bear, Louise Bear helps with our uh, educational program. She helps me with pastoral care concerns when I have to be away. Uh, so thank Louise when you get a chance to see her. I think she's on a family vacation right now. And then last, but 1,000% not least, um, so when we went through an office transition, we needed a strong office volunteer. And this person has taken over helping with weddings, helping being there on Wednesday mornings to make sure our phones and our emails are covered, doing buildings and groundwork, doing all kinds of that, helping with hospitality, which Karen also helps with hospitality. Uh, Suzanne Thomas. Suzanne, come on down. All right, now you can round of applause. Amen. Amen. Thank you, thank you. We now enter into our time of offering. And all I want to say at this time is that all of our gifts, we will be passing our plate, uh, bringing back a tradition we had pre pandemic. So we will be passing the plate this morning. And I have As the plates go around, even if you don't have something physical to put into them, we invite you to touch the plate and just think of the many ways that God's love has poured out in you and the ways you've been able to abundantly and miraculously share that love with God's world. All of your gifts, time, talent, and financial resources go to empower us. Go to empower us to be a safe sanctuary for everyone, everyone, everyone to worship God and to celebrate life and love, and to empower us to keep doing what all these people have led us to do, which is to serve Christ and to love as Christ loved in the world. Please join me in our invitation to the offering. All we have comes from you, O Lord. So we give our offerings and tithes with generous hearts, in thanksgiving for all you do for us. May these gifts given today offer hope in proclaiming and sharing the good news of Jesus Christ, our Savior, with all the world. Amen. I invite our ushers forward for our offering.
Bless them that they may be used to share your love and blessing in our community and the world. May these offerings provide for the least of these needs and the proclamation of your word to those seeking hope. Amen. of all of our hearts be accessible to you, our God, our rock, and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Uh, we're gonna, the sermon really today comes from John, Lana, and Anne. I want to briefly give you a little reason why I chose this passage. And it has to do with a lot of the work I'm doing right now. And I choose this passage because this passage is a powerful example of what it really means to have the Christian experience. It's really twofold. It's about a healing, empowering moment, and it's about living that empowerment in loving service to others. This story is a strange story. It comes randomly out of nowhere. Jesus has called the disciples. It appears in two Gospels, Matthew and Luke. In today's version, in most translations, when Jesus encounters Simon's mother-in-law, she is stricken with a high fever. D. Allen Culpepper points out that, excuse me, C. Allen Culpepper, biblical scholar, points out that the Greek 
is really ambiguous because it's not specifically a high fever she's captured by. She is, the word in Greek really means a general oppression, a general captivity. I think Luke is intentional about leaving Simon's mother-in-law an ambiguous character because we are Simon's mother-in-law. Because each and every one of us knows a captivity, knows something that's holding us back. You come to church, I believe, because you are searching for something more, something to heal from, something to be liberated from. But that liberation in American culture often stops there. It stops at a personal salvation. I have found Jesus, therefore I am good. Wrong. There's no way to say it, and maybe there's a nice way to say it. <laughs> Today's not my day to go sugar cane. It's really only half. The salvation we seek, the liberation, the healing, the fulfillment we seek is only complete when it's lived in loving service towards others. Immediately, she starts serving those around her. These 12 strangers and her son in law. I mean, what's hard for strangers or your in laws this morning? Still, her response to her encounter with the Christ is service. And now we're going to hear from three people who, in whatever mysterious, magnificent way, have been inspired by their encounter with the divine, with the Christ, and just loving service. So uh, it looks like John might be ready to go first. We didn't really have a wonder. I'll let John go first. So about three years ago, we were church shopping. I told Karen, you go out, shop for church, you tell me what you like, I'll go. If I like it, I'll go too. So we ended up coming here, and it was basically about when COVID began. So we were worshiping online for that first several months. And, uh, and but we came to the service after COVID, at least the first phase had passed, and uh, everybody was wearing masks, as they should have been. And uh, so one of the things that I wanted to do, they talked about putting a directory together, church directory, pictures and that type of thing. And I said, okay, I'll take pictures of everybody. And, uh, and I wanted to do that for selfish reasons because I didn't know who anybody was. You know, with masks, I couldn't recognize anybody. I said, hey, how you doing? And I didn't know if it was Joe Smith or Sam Jones. So I, I did that, but the directory was put together and I need to say something here. And I know Jay's part of the staff, but uh, Jay is a superstar. She put that directory together and I think we need to give her all the stuff she does. <laughs> So, so we came here because of the messages from Pastor Drew, um, the inclusivity message that he has where everyone, everyone, everyone is always welcome, uh, and the members that were so welcoming to us. And those were just slam dunks to us. And really, have you ever heard anybody that can play the piano better than Jose? <laughs> is basically just fill in. I do ushering occasionally. Uh, I help Jay with the sound system occasionally and a few other minor things. But uh, the volunteer fair that we're going to have today is uh, you'll see people at various tables and it doesn't take up a lot of time. The stuff I do, it doesn't take up a lot of my time. But everybody will explain what they do, what the needs are, and uh, hopefully you can find something that will mesh with your gifts and your interest. Because if you talk to people around the country right now in churches, uh, volunteers basically run churches. It's not like it was 20 years ago when you had staff, as massive staff. You have a very small staff, very, very small. And most churches are in the same exact situation. I want to see this church thrive and be around for 5, 10, 20 years. It may not be for 20 years, but at least for a long time. And uh, so the only way it's gonna happen is if we have volunteers. And just to put your mind at ease, it's not gonna take up a lot of your time. Everybody travels. We have snowbirds that are here half the year. 
even people who are here the full year, we're not here all the time because we travel to see relatives and friends and family and that type of thing. So, uh, and I promise you that we won't smother you with a lot of volunteer activities. Please just check us out and see what you think. God bless you. place to go because the place we had had said we could no longer be there. So a member from this church said, well, I think I know a place. Let me." So she checked with the council and everything and came back and said, yes, you can have, you can come and do your line dance here. Well, it was not long. All I had to do was walk into, not even this, up in there. I could feel the difference. I don't know about you, but when I walked in, I knew there was something very special about this church. And so I have been coming here ever since. I guess the word I'd like to say is family, because we are a true family. We have pluses sometimes, we love each other, we take care of things. I don't know about you, that when you were growing up, but we all had chores, okay? I had to wash dishes. Ooh, I hated that. But it, in a family, only just it isn't just mom and dad. It's everybody in that family has to help that family grow. Same thing here. We are family. Without our help, a lot of things would not get done. And this church is so worthy of being here. It has helped so many people. It has helped me. And so um, I was also a, a teacher. So I have a lot of things I can do. So I said, okay, well, I will do the things that I can do. So I helped with the lay readers, getting that done is very easy. I've been teaching little kids for a long time. And, and then for the singing, of the first thing I did here at the church was join the choir when we had one, because, and then I met people. But I think all of us have a lot of different things that we can do, and it doesn't have to take something awful. It just takes the willingness to do it and say, I have this talent, I can do it. Then off we went on our amazing life's adventure. I often tried to find my own church, but it never clicked. Our lives were hectic. Every day was nonstop. Our three precious daughters were busy, buzzy handfuls, especially during the teenage years. I remember I prayed often, but silently. Nobody likes a preachy mom. Later, we traveled a great deal all over the world, but every time I signed up for a Bible study, I had to stop attending because of our busy schedule. When we re finally retired and moved back to Tucson, I was determined to find a church home. I visited around, but just wasn't feeling it until someone asked me if I knew about the little stone church up the hill from the El Conquistador. I searched, and I found it. The first Sunday I was here, we sang, surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. And I knew he truly was. I love this church. 
and I believe it is God's house. I want it to thrive and grow. I believe you should not just show up on Sundays and enjoy being here, but you must join in the work that it takes to keep the doors open, the air conditioner on, and the coffee brewing. And in case you didn't know, that magnificent mountain that we love to look at is called Cathedral Mountain. We truly are in God's house. Thank you, Pastor Drew, for asking me to explain why I volunteer. And all God's people said, Amen. Somebody took my bullet. What's that? Who's leading this? And we're singing. Let's stand if you're able to buy your spirit. I'll join you in a second. <laughs> celebration of life and love and thank you for being here this morning may the love of the creator sustain you may the peace of jesus flow through you may the presence of the holy spirit fill you with grace and give you the courage to share the good news amen <laughs> <laughs> 